my apartment. And it appears the element of surprise is in my favor. <laughs> you broke into my apartment. Did I? <laughs> well, see, this is my apartment. You're on this side of the door. All right, Mr. Cassidy. If you wish to continue this foolish charade, you may. But I, for one, would like to cut to the chase. You knew as well as I this day would come. You broke into my apartment. <laughs> I am your nemesis. You're going to have to repeat that. I am your nemesis. Your arch rival? The one who has dedicated her life to defeating you, to destroying you, to taking this sorry little life you built for yourself. Hey, I you know you. Take this sorry little life and make it crumble around you. You were in the mail room. Um, your life is a sand castle, and I'm the rising tide. Who's that little part? Uh, Marco? Calling 
going to the mail room complaining about letters going to the wrong department or taking too long to get to your desk. <laughs> I mean, you even sent that email around saying that the entire mail room should be fired because nobody sends letters anymore. Anyway, <laughs> I noticed that every time I stopped by your desk for the delivery, you'd spend a little bit of extra time watching me and talking to me. And then I started thinking, maybe he's not really an asshole. Maybe he's trying to encourage me by appearing like an asshole. <laughs> but maybe he wants me to take him down a peg. And that's when it popped into my head that you wanted to be my nemesis. I mean, it all fit. Your name even has that alliteration thing you get in the comics. Colin Cassidy. <laughs> not me, obviously. I got stuck with a little old lady name. I mean, no one's gonna fall to their knees and scream out my name like Shatner did in rap. Marcus! So does not have the right ring to it, you know? So you break into my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I make a point in telling me your life wasn't gonna be in town. <laughs> That's because I was hitting on you. But you're married. Hence the reference to my wife being out of town. <laughs> oh. oh, you were thinking less Batman Joker, more Batman Cavalry. I honestly was not thinking about Batman. You're not even one to pictures. Why not you? You're young, you're cute. I realize now that you're clearly insane. <laughs> Sorry to ruin your romantic misconception. We're not all Romeo and Juliet. Have you actually read Romeo and Juliet, though? <laughs> that is not a romance. Again, you are missing the point. Have you ever heard of oxytocin? <laughs> is that the stuff Charlie Sheen was on? <laughs> no, it's oxycodone. Different stuff. Uh, <laughs> in marketing, the seven deadly sins are like a checklist of things to do in a campaign. Some guys focus on envy. Others do pride. Me? Lust is my forte, and oxytocin is my holy grail. It's a chemical that's released by the brain during sex. Its sole purpose is to help build an interpersonal bond between you and another person. It makes you feel good, it makes your heart race, it makes your skin flush. And every time that you see that other person, your brain gives another tiny dose of it. Eventually, you start to associate that great feeling that sexual passion with that other person. It's like Pavlov's dog, only instead of drool inspired by a bell, it's love inspired by a good solid shag. It's not your dad. You should put that on a Hallmark card. The thing about oxytocin, the thing about it is that it doesn't last forever. Eventually, you, just, you don't get that same response. Your brain gives you less and less, and then one day you meet someone else interesting. The pituitary gets back into action, your heart, Race. So lying to your wife and sleeping around is all right? This is science. No morals, no dogma, no right or wrong. Just research and results. Biology and chemistry. That prick you feel is a Cuban. That choice of words there. <laughs> Think about it. Is hurting my wife by telling her I want to sleep with other people any better? This might amaze you, but I do love my wife. The last thing I want to do is hurt her. By telling her the truth? And who is that going to benefit? Right now, she's happy. And apart from a lunatic breaking into my apartment, I'm happy. Why would I want to change that? Listen, the first time I cheated on my wife, I told her. What you said? The past is the past. It, it hurt her, but she was able to look beyond that to see that what we have, our relationship, is more important. That's something she and I agree on. Not I'm going to throw that away by telling her something she doesn't want to hear. Oh my god, you actually believe that. This is a real eye-opening conversation. Oh, wait, I finished that glass of... Hold up, where did you get that wine? From the rack in the closet thing? What shelf? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Do you know what 
this is. <laughs> this is a 1757 Lafitte. Yeah. <laughs> Jefferson bottle, this is coffee! Completely honest about the whole 
not knowing you were hitting on me thing, but that's just because I thought it would lead to a better payoff in the end. Which, I think it did. I mean, you really got into it. You had your whole little vengeance monologue and everything. Word of advice, though, saying what you're going to do is a rookie mistake. I mean, have you ever read Watchmen? <laughs> do you seriously think I'd explain my masterstroke if there remained the slightest possibility of you affecting its outcome? I did it 35 minutes ago. Alan Moore, so awesome. Right. Seriously, check it out. Oh, I'm gonna like having you as my nemesis. It's always better when they think they're the good guy. Sure. Anyway, I gotta go. The Margo Mobile's on one hour parking. <laughs> Say, do you think you could fall to your knees and scream out my name? I know, I know, it's a long shot, but it would just be the cherry on top, you know? <laughs>